Okay, well, um, hi there. Um, I'm sorry for leading you on with giving you the wrong impression. Um, I lied to you, sorry. Uh, this, is, this is the headline that I wrote to grab all your attention, but as I'll get to, uh, at the time I was working with television and in te the world of television, we like to th make things a bit, uh, a bit more dramatic <laughs> than they actually are. So uh, this is the correct version of my headline. It was in the middle of the night, was wasn't during the day, and what I broke was national television. So if you were hoping to hear a story uh, that you have seen on the news, um, no, you haven't seen it because the news wasn't on, because the television was black and it was in the middle of the night, so you weren't watching anyway. Okay, who am I? Um, this is me, uh, well, you also introduced me pretty, pretty well, so I won't go over that again. Uh, but I want to introduce you to um, a younger me, because uh, the story I'm going to tell is set uh, nearly a decade ago. Uh, it was a pretty traumatic event for me, uh, which is why I still remember a lot of details. Uh, but I was, I was younger, I was much less experienced, um, and, uh, well, uh, Kind of naive. Uh, can I have a timer on? Thank you. Uh, okay, so I'm here to tell you a story, and it's my story, so if I get any of the details wrong, you won't know it, and neither will I. Uh, I remember these things very vividly, even though it was a long time ago. Um, I might be remembering them wrong, but I'll be remembering them wrong vividly, so you won't be able to tell the difference. Uh, I'm telling the story to, um, well, so you can all learn from my mistakes and also, while we're at it, showcase a, a post-mortem process, um, an incident analysis, and I'm also telling it to, uh, well, to help me get over this traumatic experience because it wasn't fun. Um, and just to get started, I want to tell a bit about perspective. Um, who has read, uh, who has heard of Sidney Decker? Uh, just a handful. Uh, it's a professor that's uh, studying, has been studying um, mainly uh, aircraft accidents or any big incidents and the human error factor, the human factors in it. Um, if you haven't read the book, Field Guide to Human Error, I can heartily recommend it. Uh, he's describing three types of perspective to look at an incident. There's the, uh, the hindsight perspective, where you already know uh, exactly what went wrong, and you can and you start to look for causes from there. You can look from the outside, so you can see what happened and what people did and what they should have done. Or you can look from the inside, where you can actually uh, uh, discern what the persons in the incident experienced, uh, so you can see what they're seeing, and be able to, to judge from there. And Sidney Decker always says, uh, use the inside perspective, so that's what I'll be using. I'll be telling my story from the inside without any outside context. Okay, so the post-mortem process. I just stole this. There are a hundred thousands of these, and you can Google it, look, have look at, uh, at any of these, and they're all more or less similar. This one has a lot of steps. Uh, I stole this one from Atlassian. Uh, I'll, I took this one because it fits my story. Uh, it's a lot of steps, but I'll be picking a couple of outs uh, to make the story flow a little bit better. Uh, I'll be p taking out the timeline and I'll be interspersing the lessons whenever I learn them. So, a context. The company I was working for um, was, uh, like I said, it was a television company and we were not producing television uh, our, uh, the way we made money was we grabbed, uh, we connected the content producers, the studios, with the uh, cable companies, the service providers that want to uh, show the television to their, uh, their users, their, their clients. And we were in the middle and we were um, doing some fancy stuff with networking and multicast 
and that was why we were valuable, or that was why we, uh, as a company, made money. Um, by understanding how this multicast stuff works. Um, a very, very, very short overview of the organization I was in. Uh, I'll be introducing some of these people when we, when we meet them. Um, I was right there in the bottom as a junior engineer, meteor engineer, uh, working with, uh, with Brent, who's my lead engineer, was really, really, really smart guy, knew everything about the network. And uh, my IT manager, Bill, uh, uh, Patty was uh, the service delivery manager, making sure we met our SLAs, or at least reporting whether or not we did. And uh, very important uh, in our organization was uh, our customer representative, Sarah, uh, didn't actually work for the customer, but worked for us, but representative, represented the customer side in every discussion. Uh, also, um, any money we made on this contract uh, went towards her uh, targets and any penalties we had for not making the SLA were deducted from it. So she was really, really, really involved in uh, the service we were delivering. Uh, of course, I have changed all these names except mine to protect the innocent. I was, this, I, I was in dubio whether or not to change my name as well, but that would make the story a bit more Confusing, so I kept my name in and changed all the others. Uh, so, our service. Um, very, very, very simple. Uh, on the one hand, we have, uh, 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 we got feeds from, uh, from like studios. Um, came in as redundant feeds uh, within our network to a switch cluster and then over multiple network paths. Uh, separate handoff locations, we would uh, hand it over to the providers where uh, you guys would all be watching television. Um, oh, uh, uh, one thing to note is these are the crown jewels of the company. Uh, the, the television feeds were um, important, major national television uh, feeds. Uh, you'd notice if they were down uh, uh, this is, this is the impor most important thing that our company was doing. Um, of course, not every company, not every channel is uh, equally important. We had some primary channels, the big ones, and then we had a whole bunch of secondary channels that nobody was watching anyway. So uh, the primary ones, these are the crown jewels. Okay. Zooming in. Uh, I was, I was just starting at the company and uh, I was uh, f uh, first of all reading all, all sorts of documentation, getting to know the entire network. And at a certain point in time, uh, one of our team members left and uh, we had to divide up the spoils, uh, I mean tasks uh, that he was doing. And I got handed this service that I just described. Um, because, uh, well, I wasn't afraid of multicast, mainly because I hadn't done much with it yet. Uh, so I got to, to uh, got uh, assigned this one, and I, I, I looked into it, and it was uh, well, some network, and it worked. But at a certain certain point, um, the customer came and, uh, and said, "Well, we want to add some channels." Uh, this was in the time that HD channels were new, so they wanted to uh, be able to to deliver HD versions of the, of their primary channels, and that meant that meant expanding. Uh, the hardware footprint, another cabinet with more servers, and it needs to be wired up as well. So we need to expand this switch cluster. And uh, I was uh, looking into the change to expand it, and I noticed, uh, yeah, it's a cluster, which means it's, uh, it has a single control plane. Um, if something's wrong with that single control plane, the entire cluster goes down. Now we've got all sorts of redundancy in the network, separate paths, separate feeds, except at this specific point where there is fate sharing. So if this cluster goes down, uh, everything goes black. And in addition to that, we, uh, since it's a cluster, and uh, have you ever worked with network switches in clustering, stacking? Yeah, some. Uh, the more switches you add, the longer it takes to reboot. 
So we had a cluster of four, and if we would want to reboot it, it would take 10 minutes, 10 minutes of total darkness on the video feeds. That was not acceptable at all to the customer. Um, so uh, before I could expand, uh, I was, um, um, I tried to um, uh, submit a change to split the cluster in, in an A and a B cluster, A and a B switches, uh, completely separate, no fade sharing. So we could always reboot one side without affecting the other one, always have one video feed available, everybody would be happy. Um, so now it's time to talk a bit about error budget. Uh, who here has heard about error budget? Yeah. So when you're in a uh, highly performing organization, you're, you've got like service level objectives. We'll be talking about that later today, I guess. Uh, and uh, a target level of availability. And as long as, as, long as your uptime is over your, uh, your SLO, you can do changes. Um, we weren't there yet as an organization or at all. Uh, if I would have even uh, said the words error budget, they would have locked me out of the room. So I have another metric uh, which we were using, and that was the uh, CBM length, which is the number of hours per week at change board meetings. Uh, whoever had change board meetings run along? Uh, in my experience, if, this, uh, if your CBM length is about half an hour each week, that's pretty good. If it runs over an hour, then you probably there's something wrong. Um, if it's zero, there's probably also something wrong. Uh, but we were, uh, when, I got, when I joined the company, we were running um, easily an hour and a half, sometimes even two hours a week of change board meetings, uh, which was because we were not in control for changes. We had too much downtime when we, whenever we did change. Um, but once uh, at the time I'm talking about, we got it back to about an hour a week, which was okay. So we got a bit more leeway and a bit more credibility to do the, the change we need to do. And that leads me to the first lesson I learned. Um, it's a good thing to clear technical debt. We all know that. Um, uh, it's like a landmine and it will explode when you step onto it. Uh, but you need to earn the trust for your organization to be able to clear it. If, you, if the, you, you're not trusted with changes, you will never be able to clear the technical debt that you need to clear and you'll be running into more problems and uh, this will spiral downwards. So work to earn the trust needed to clear the technical debt. Okay, so after some change board meetings, uh, I got approval for my change. I tested it in the lab, I documented it, all sorts of uh, rollback steps, uh, program, and um, at a certain point it's 2 a.m. and I am in the data center. Um, I hate 2 a.m. maintenance windows, actually. Uh, why? Well, if I, got, uh, if I have to do maintenance at uh, midnight, I can stay up late, then do the change, then go to sleep. If I can do a change at 4 a.m., I'll go to sleep early, wake up, do the change, have an entire day. At 2 a.m., what do I do? Go to sleep? Not. I hate it. <laughs> anyway, 2 a.m., I'm, I'm in the day center with, uh, uh, with, with Patty, our service delivery manager, there are two of us, so she's talking to the, uh, the control room where they're monitoring all, the, all sorts of stuff from the, the video side of the, of, of the world. And I've got a monitoring system, I've got a video monitoring application, and I'm plugged into my, uh, my switches, uh, doing all the proje projects, everything's looking right, so I can start actually doing my configuration. Uh, oh, and another thing, in the, the, the people in the control room are pretty smart. Uh, what they did uh, to monitor uh, our servers is they just ordered the circuit from, from, uh, from the biggest provider there was, ordered the server, circuit, have it uh, connected in the control room, put on a television there, just, uh, well, so you can watch television. It sounds pretty good to be able to watch television in the control room at midnight, but in this case it was actually useful. So, um, I started cutting, uh, uh, doing the config, pulling cables, and uh, immediately I noticed uh, this is not good. Our cluster was going in split brain mode, and in this case that meant that neither of the halves of the cluster was forwarding traffic. So everything was, uh, was down, and I knew that this is, this is bad news. Um, which leads me to the next lesson I learned. Uh, I tested this in the lab, did I? Yes, I did. Uh, however, in the lab we had a two-node cluster, 
and in production with a four node cluster. And a two node cluster behaves differently. Uh, that's good to know, uh, and I know now, but uh, you should be aware that your lab is not equal to your production. You should know the differences and know where it behaves different, or else you'll be stuck midnight in the data center uh, en encountering weird stuff. Okay, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not panicking. I've got a rollback scenario, rollback the configuration, plug in the cables again, and uh, whew, looking from the CLI, it looks good. And my network monitoring says uh, everything is fine. Um, but, the, but the video monitoring application, it's, it's, um, it's showing some weird stuff. So um, I'm talking to, 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 to Pretty, our service uh, delivery manager, and she's, she's in the control room, and she's, uh, well, she's flipping the channels. And it looks like the primary channels, they're all fine. But the secondary channels, there's a problem with it. So that, that's weird. So I'm not uh, panicking yet because the primary channels are up. We're still, we're still fine, right? That, that's, that's the important stuff. This, nobody's watching secondary channels, especially not at night. Um, lesson I learned, have a backup plan for your rollback. Did you ever consider that your rollback can go wrong? It can, and it will. Have a backup plan, some service uh, disaster recovery, service continuity plan, just so you know what to do. Okay, so at this stage, I'm not sure whether, whether, we're, not, whether we're down or not. Our, our video monitoring application had a history of false positives, so I didn't really trust it. And I, 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 I spent all the time uh, uh, figuring out, finger, banging the CLI, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, meanwhile, Patty is calling Sarah, the customer rep, because, well, there is an, an outage with some part of the system, and Sarah is, does not like being called in the night to be able to, to, be, able to be told that. So. Uh, um, Patty's not having a good time. Um, lesson learned. A monitoring system that has a history of false positives is not good because you can't trust it and you need to be able to trust your monitoring or else how do you know what's going on? Okay, so um, I'm, still, I'm still very, very much into the weeds. Now, uh, I, uh, I've been uh, banging the DCLI for about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, I can't find what's going wrong. Uh, the primary channels are still up, so I, is it, but, uh, but I'm, I'm, I really can't find what's going wrong. Um, I'd like to reboot the entire cluster, but no, I, uh, 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 Sarah won't allow that because the primary channels are up, and if I reboot a cluster, it'll go down for 10 minutes, totally down, so that's not okay. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm kind of stressing here now. Uh, but uh, at that point, uh, Brent, our lead engineer, who has, um, uh, was on call duty, uh, he wakes up, uh, sees there's slightly more notifications on his phone than he was expecting, uh, because, uh, well, I um, put the cluster in maintenance mode, but there's, there's going all sorts of alarms off anyway. Uh, so he wakes up and d does the really, really smart thing, um, turns on the TV, and it's, it's, it's static, it's just black. <laughs> uh, so, so he's, he's, uh, he's calling me, he's texting me actually because he knows I'm in maintenance and you don't call people in maintenance because they might be doing important stuff. Text me, is everything okay? Uh, I noticed the television is black. Uh, this is the point where I do start to panic a little uh, because these are the crown jewels. Um, turns out he's on a different provider. Later we found out that uh, the main provider that we were watching in the control room actually had a backup plan. They had a separate path to the, to the, to the source for just primary channels. And we announced maintenance. When we announced the maintenance, they switched to the backup path. So they never, uh, they never noticed that we had an outage. <laughs> but the other providers did. <laughs> so um, about half the country will still be able to watch uh, reruns of the 11, uh, 11 p.m. news. Um, but the other half wasn't. A lesson learned, um, your talk to your clients. If, if your service you're providing is really important to them, they're probably thinking about what to do when it's broken. Uh, it's very good to know if they have a backup path and what they're gonna do when you have a maintenance. Um, so um, now I know that we are in a, in a bad place and it's dark, uh, I'm gonna reboot the switch anyway because we're down anyway. 
and I did probably the hardest thing I ever did. Um, I know rebooting takes about 10 minutes. Uh, so I typed in the reboot command and went for a coffee. <laughs> uh, and uh, as it happens, the coffee stand was right next to the control room, of course. So uh, at a certain point, I started hearing, uh, uh, they were monitoring our, uh, they, they were also able to, to monitor the, the video monitoring uh, application. And, uh, and I started to know, well, everything is, go is working again, brand's cold, right? I've got television again, everything is fine. Whew. I apparently had uh, uh, three quarters of an hour of total outage uh, for national television, but we survived it. Um, which is a really important lesson. Uh, it's good to have someone to talk to during an instance. I had uh, our service delivery manager with me, which was nice, but I couldn't discuss technical details with, it, with, uh, with her. Um, having Brent on the phone really, really helped me. So next time I did nightly maintenance, I always made sure there was someone awake that I could talk to either with me in the data center or a phone call away, just to be able to, to talk to each other. Um, good. So, um, a very lengthy change board meeting later. Uh, we want to try again, obviously, uh, and we needed to try again because we needed to expand the cluster uh, and we needed to split it first. Um, this was a really, really, really hard discussion. Uh, to have mainly with Sarah because she didn't like us touching the production environment anymore. Um, but at this point, uh, our manager, my manager Bill, uh, really went went to bat for us. She uh, he defended us, uh, said, "Well, this is exactly uh, this outage proves why we need to split the cluster because a single outage can take down the entire production. We really, 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 really need to to do this." which we did about a month later, and it worked without a hitch. And that leads me to uh, one further lesson. Uh, having a good manager that has your back, that is so incredibly worthwhile. Uh, remember those people and try to work with good managers. If you have a band manager, oh, bad for you. I, I mean, that's really bad for you. Um, in conclusion, well, is there a root cause for this? Uh, was this a human error? Hands up who thinks this, was, this all was human error? Uh, it, it might be, but it's not the error you think of. Um, actually, the, the error came because it was, the entire system was rushed into production without full availability. When it was taken into production, we already knew, or at least Brent already knew, that the, the, the switch cluster was going to be a problem. But at that point, it couldn't be changed anymore because it had to go live. Uh, RFC 1925 rule one, it has to work. It has to go live, just put it in production now, it's redundant enough. Um, and that, that hurt us later. If we had taken another week or so to get a better, uh, think about a better way to put it in production, we would have spared all these problems. And another thing, um, well, the rollback failed because there was a multicast bug. The, my monitoring system was telling me everything is green because Unicast was working fine, uh, our service was multicast, and multicast was not working fine. Um, let's go in in, uh, into the details. Uh, this, this is a personal uh, lesson. Um, multicast is really, really complex, and even if, you, uh, if the software works, then the hardware underneath might have some problems, and they have difficulty talking to each other, and then configuring all that, that's really, really, really difficult. Uh, so, to the lessons learned. I've already told them, so I'll just go to buy them really uh, quickly. Um, in a, an incident analysis, there are uh, three ways to look at the lessons you learn, uh, what went wrong, what went well, and where you're lucky. Uh, it's very easy to get stuck on what went wrong and describe all that, but um, you can learn from that, but you can also learn from things that went well and try to embed it in your process. And especially uh, the things you were lucky, uh, and I was lucky a lot, uh, try to, uh, to, to uh, turn luck into uh, predictability by preparing for it. So, um, I hope uh, this was good for you. It was cathartic for me to be able to talk about uh, this traumatic experience. Um, 
I feel uh, much better, relieved. So thank you very much for attending me.